question. Why were those paper roads created way back when? It seems like they do nothing but create issues. Yeah. I think there was, it looked like some developer had made a lot of little lots on the paper roads and hoped it solved them all. Right. But it looks uh, like people bought multiple lots and so the development they were looking at never happened. Okay. When they originally started the subdivision of that yeah. area, they intended to have a much more a lot more small units, oh, much okay. more like a neighborhood, but it never came to fruition. Okay. This, this road came up like a couple of years ago. Not even a couple of years ago. Just last summer, I was here. Yeah, <laughs> about yeah. The same road. Yeah. How yeah. about road. the same paper road? And yep. I, I know I've been down there at least twice, three times. Looking at it. Yeah. yeah. All right, we all decided we got three hearings tonight. The public hearing before the zoner, zoning board of appeals for the town settlement will be held on Thursday, May 13th. For the application to consider Gary Hunter SBL 9.26-1-20 for property located at 1276 Tyler Road for an area variance zero rear yard setback on a paper street. Construct a new, new home where home once stood. The above application is open for inspection at the common Sullivan office building during regular hours. Persons wishing to appear at such a hearing may do so by a person, attorney, or representative. Gary, if you want to come up here and tell us the uh, scope of your project, the house that you would like to build. Yeah, so if you look at the screen, we own what's in blue. We also own the corner piece right here. So we have this nice L-shaped property. And there's this paper street that kind of bisects us from the back here. Well, you can see the original house that was there was very close to that paper street. This house has since fallen down. Mother Nature decided it was time to go this winter, took it down, and we want to rebuild. But because of the property offsets that we have to keep and being that it's a corner lot and that our septic tank is located about here, very close to this house that was in existence, we need to push the house back as far as we can to keep 30 feet off of this and to keep 30 feet off of here. It seems nearly impossible to also keep 30 feet off of, sorry about that, off of that paper road as well. It just really locks us into such a small area. So we are asking for permission to push the house pretty much close to that, that paper road, which, I mean, it's technically a right of way to this person over here, but they have access from this side part of Tyler Road that way, so they don't they don't ever use it. So who has access again? Sorry, I wasn't looking there. Yeah, this um, house that's here, but if you look, her driveway, she has access right there by way of a paved road so From this Palmer is Palmer Drive, and it, looks yeah, like that's it, it, right. and it looks like there's another is that an extension of the paper road right there. This so year, paper road goes all yeah. the way. But they have a little T like right there. Yeah, it's the the T there as well, though. That's part of right One not past your house. Sarah. Oh yeah, so this is owned by this guy here, right. and he is uh, parceled that together. Well, I, my my point was that. The paper road, yeah, the 9053 Tyler, they're not lacking access. No, not know, whatsoever. They, by use of the paper road that's directly behind your property. Correct. Yeah. No one needs access except for literally this parcel right here, which we own. So we are the ones that need access to that property back there. And so if we could put the house 
you know, it kind of becomes like a driveway essentially, but you don't own it and so you can't park on it or anything like are that. Are you going to be utilizing this for a driveway or are you coming in off here? Currently, it's right here. You can see there's like some stoned area right there. Mm -hmm. Currently, that's what we use as a place. We will end up parking here or in the back over here. We won't park on the paper street, but we'll use that as our access in and out. Is the corner lot um, you own where you want where the old house was yep. you own you also own the corner lot yep it, is that merged together as one lot now I or it was it larry and i worked on it over the summer with tanya i think i think it's merged but it just so hasn't too. been filed on this thing yet because we just got our new tax assessment now that the house fell down and it says it's 0.43 acres and it's only uh the, the property number is uh, dash one dash 20 and it's the whole piece right there as one parcel on the tax roll now okay so, okay. so, so you're not pushing the western line then no no okay not at all now you said you were going to be close to that paper street how close is close i mean the house that was there was i don't know 20 feet from it and you can see there was the garage there that was right on the line but it was never in the paperwork so i just want to make it official and do by the books and get it you know all set that I, will be an issue later so i mean i'm proposing zero feet i don't think we would actually put it zero feet but we need to have flexibility because our septic is literally like where that uh those words are right there it's just right outside the house is there any reason that you couldn't push your house further to the west? Well, we need to stay 30 feet off of that road, and this is only 50 feet wide, and we're proposing to run the house this way so it faces the lake instead of, um, okay. you know, uh, perpendicular to the lake. We want to run it parallel to the lake. So we want to run it this way, which means we're going to naturally come closer to this property line anyways. But we can't go up too far, like I said, because the septic's right there. And so we need to be able to get the house back and then be able to run it behind the septic. And the leach field and, and whatnot comes over to this area here, so we don't want to touch any of that. Mm -hmm. would park, on this one, parking would come from Tyler, you'd have a driveway cut here? Um, so if you're looking at that, that piece is back there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, perfect, same perspective. So we would be driving in here. So you would use the, the paper, paper road as a driveway? I mean, it's a right of way. Anybody in the area that has it on their deed is allowed to drive on it. And then our garage will be back here and that's where we'll park. Or we might put a small driveway there next to the house for, you know, day parking or that sort of thing. That's why I kind of draw the plot, the land plot for you. So the actual variance that's being sought, you're going to be 50 foot off the west line. Yeah. 60 Ideally, feet yeah. from the north line. You're just going to be really close to the right away in the back. Yeah. We want to be able to push it off the corner. How close, how wide is the right of way? Like how far will you be from the actual property behind you? I believe this right away on paper is 20 feet. From the research that I've done up at the town offices, on paper it's 20 feet. There's a house on that corner. Yeah. Behind yeah. you. Yeah, this There's a house be. behind you, right? Yeah, there is. Not that it matters. Is this house going to be bigger than the one that fell down? The square footage, or the footprint of it? Currently, no. We don't want. Okay, so my son's a senior in high school. He's about to graduate. My younger son is freshman. They're moving out of the house, right? My parents live in the area. We'll probably be taking care of them as they age. It's going to be my husband and I. So we currently are not proposing any place bigger. This, I think, was 20 by 54. And I think we're proposing 30 by 40, roughly the same amount of square footage. But with the lumber prices right now, that's being put on hold, of course. <laughs> But our future plans, it's going to be, we got to clean up this mess. It's going to take us all summer to clean up that mess, first of all. 
but when we're ready, we want to be able to move forward and not have to, to wait for approvals at that time. Yeah, your proposal asks for a 48 by 30 single family. Okay, 48, yeah. I've drawn so many plans, they all merged together. No, that's, that's fine. I'm just reading what you wrote to refresh yeah. your memory. Yeah, we put a proposal into the mark of the home place, and from the time I put in the proposal until we got the estimate, it went up $20,000. We said now is not the time, not with college bills coming up. Is there anybody from board do we have any other questions? Is there anybody here or online or anything that has any comments? Um, I submitted a letter. I oh, excuse me, sorry. sorry. First, state your name and sure. your address and sure. your, where about you live. Um, my name is Martha Fry, and I own a property of 32, 1317 Front Street, oh, which is also a private. Did you just buy that? No, we've been there for 82 years. Oh, you're the yellow house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that place. We've been there a long time. Yeah, I didn't know who lived there. Oh. I mean, Terry Short yeah, used to be Martha. Down, down the road my parents lived. Um, I gave a letter to, I sent a letter in regarding this application and request for zoning variance. Um, you know, when I went and looked at the town zoning law, I looked at the reason variances are given, and it's largely because um, an application that would result in practical difficulty or deprive the owner of reasonable use of the land or building involved but in no other cases. So I was trying to see what is the hardship here or the problem with citing a new home on the property. I mean, I have no problem having a new home on the property. That's not the issue. But I'm trying to figure out why is there a hardship that you do a zero lot setback on the paper road, which the paper road is, maybe you know, nobody really knows who owns it. The ownership's at question. And so it, and the reason I'm doing this, if you look at my property, I have the same kind of situation with a homeowner to the west. They've built a porch literally almost on my lot line. So if they have to maintain their property, they're on my they're on my property, maintain their property. And I also have a variance on the other side with a lot line that's not the proper setback according to the zoning law. So I myself seeing how variances affect property owners. Now, in this case, there's nobody obviously maintaining the paper road. I don't know what's going to happen to it. I don't even know who owns it. But it seems to me there should be some reasonable setback from an abutting property owner and not zero. Even if you don't know who the person is, there is a property owner behind that paper road to the south, as you can see. And um, actually, I went by the site. I, could, I thought the paper road was your driveway because it looks like that's been used historically as the driveway for the house. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at, um, you know, I think trees would have to be taken out of other things. Again, it's an ownership issue, and, and I think the ownership is questionable at this point. And I think the house that is to the south is in an estate right now. I think the gentleman owned it died, and I don't know what they're anticipating doing with that property. But, um, you know, my feeling is I don't know what the hardship is. I, maybe it's the septic system. I don't know when the septic was put in, if you put a new one in. Oh, we replaced it last year, yeah. So, so it's a self-induced hardship by the owner. I mean, a way to avoid the septic system now in some way. And that's not how I kind of see it, but you, you know, it's your decision, obviously. Because the septic wasn't there and now it's forcing kind of where the house goes, it sounds like. Well, the septic was there. We just put in a new tank. So it went in the same place as the existing septic was, so we didn't move so it So you all. used the old leach field. Correct. And we did that on purpose because we just, the tank was broken and they had right. to replace it. So it's not it's been used by us. And it originally was, they were going to rehab the house. Yeah. And then the house fell down. Yeah. Not, not, not a great so, opportunity. Yeah. Really I, not I, I, this board has never given a zero setback. I mean, because we realize you've got to maintain it and you can't maintain it without having to go on your neighbor's property. So I don't know how you got those situations. If that was if they were done before oh, zoning or yeah, people did it, you know, yeah, without. You'll see. see that they just bought that. Yeah, neighbor. the porch. It's this is the fence line. That is their porch. It's actually even I think over the actual property line. Yeah. So 
it, this is why I get a little concerned when you're tying zero lot setback is because it does have an impact on other right. other property owner. And, right. and like I said, I mean, this board doesn't allow zero. And with the paper street set is tough, you know, like I said, like you said, usually paper streets are right away. We are a little bit more lenient to let them get a little closer to the line though. And that's, I mean, the difference here is that there is still 20 feet between where we would put the house and the neighboring property, whereas that wasn't in existence. Well, I was thinking, place. you know, a compromise might be that I, the, the tax map I saw is 18 feet for the paper road. It's on the, if you pull it up, it's 18. If you did a 12 foot setback, that would give you 30, which is more the intent of the zoning for the district. That's another way to look at it. It kind of is more in the intent of the zoning law because it's MR, what is it, MR 12, is that it? Yeah. We also, because of the lot, we have to be 30 feet off of here. We have to be 30 feet off of here. It's kind of crazy that we also have to be 30 feet off there when this is a non-existent road. That's no, I'm saying if you use the road, add that to, add 12 feet to that road, you get the 30. So right, the I road. know, but I'm saying road. instead, I shouldn't have to be, what is the property offset from an abutting property? If, if our property went right onto that property line, how far do I have to be off of their property? You, you see what I'm saying? 30. That's 30. 30 also? I, yeah. I thought we had let them go on a right away. Right what, what do we use, um, what's the setback for a fence? Don't we normally make it? There oh. isn't a setback for a fence unless it needs a variance. The fence doesn't need a variance. Oh no, Didn't the, you guys rewrote yeah, it. Yeah, it was changed. You yeah, isn't it a foot off the line? You at least, yeah, I think you at least need a foot or two. I forget exactly what it is. But as you know, Mark, the whole point of the given variances is to help relieve and to look at the situation and to see if any relief can be given. And like I said, Normally, a lot of times you do have like right of ways, or down there you got these paper roads, and yeah. who knows, you know, who owns them, and if One somebody foot. could actually come in there and buy it, you know. And I don't think nobody One knows foot. that answer. No, I don't think they do. I, I just think with the ownership in question, you know, it, again, I don't think zero is, is appropriate. I think you something a little bit more than zero. And that's why I came up with 12 feet because if you add the 18, you get 30, which is the intent of the zoning law. And you can use the paper road right, right away as part of the right. setback requirement. Usually, uh, they get at least a paper road. It's usually abandoned roads. Each owner owns half of it, so really it's only nine, but that doesn't matter. You, you well, that's, you know, it, it's funny because I think when I talk to Larry, I know that they don't know who owns the roads. Doesn't that usually revert back to the county and then they would sell it or they would divide up and who, who takes care of abandoned property? There's hundreds of them. <laughs> but yeah. if, if a property is abandoned, doesn't state law say it would revert back to the county? I'm looking at your attorney to tell me I, the answer yeah, on this. I mean, with the paper streets, it's it's one of these questions that really like looking through that much you know it's, <laughs> so, it's a lot more no i understand, I understand. Than, if there was an old sure. if there was an old town road and abandoned then there are certain processes legal things and all mm -hmm. but a paper road is i don't think there are really any roads rules but like if the town abandons a road there are certain steps you can go where it can revert back to the ownerships but we tried to get a player road. to buy that and no one will touch it. It's not worth their yeah, time. Right, We've right, tried. Right. We know who owns it. Elaine Grittenbecker owns it. I called her and talked to her. She's got a law office down in Chittenango. She's ready to sell it to me. No lawyer will help us. So if you know a lawyer, we would love to buy that paper yeah, road. We know who owns it. Have they, have they been paying taxes on it? Do you pay taxes on the road? It was offered to the town. The town never accepted it. Huh. She has to rescind her offer, but she wants to make sure that it goes to us. And no lawyer will help us because we know who she is we've talked to her is it because it's a clear title issue that they there is no title there is no like deed that she can give us it has to be written first and put on the books and given a parcel number and no lawyer will help us so it's, it goes back to the Brennan Becker estate when her father owned the farm back there Half of it was Bill oh, and half of it was Brittenbucker. <laughs> wow. I mean, I've done a lot of digging into town and spent hours up there trying to figure out that paper road. I know exactly who owns it, but no one will help us buy it. We can't get a lawyer to help us. And the building codes do allow you to build up to a zero lot line in a public right of way. Yeah. 
as what we have done it. Public, I'm, if, right. if I'm not mistaken. Right. This What's is the existing right? setback? What's the existing setback for this for the structure that was there? I mean that garage. Yeah, well, that garage, yeah, that garage is on the house. How far off? I don't that? have the map with me. I don't know if it said. I think it said this garage was six feet off of it or something. Because theoretically, you can rebuild on the same foundation within a year and not need a variance. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was nowhere near Terrace Street. It was quite a ways off the line. Correct. Right. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. It was a good ways off the line. Meaning, like oh, only plus she wants to reorient the house. She doesn't yeah. want to use the same footprint. Which I I totally understand what yeah. you're trying to do. And I mean, why you want to do it? Nice. If you saw that place before we bought it, it was <coughs> quite a mess. Is, All right. Well. This is roughly 20 feet. Thank you, Martha. We have your concerns. Um, is there anybody else? I mean, because we're live, there could be somebody listening to us, right? Yes, but no one's. Nobody's. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody listening? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is there anybody yeah, out there? <laughs> That's what I tell okay. you at school all the time. Is anybody out there? All right, well, we're going to discuss, we have two other hearings. We're going to discuss those or have the public hearings and then we're going to discuss them after the public hearing. So you're more than welcome to stay around and hear our discussion. So I will close this public hearing and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, all right, okay. Now, do you live in Chittenangle now, or? I still have the firm, yeah, back and forth. Before, you were more in the southern tier, or where was you? No, Cooperstown. Cooperstown. Yeah. Have you still own the Cannon factory? Didn't you no, no, that no, that's sold. Okay. There, we decided not to proceed with the project, so it's sold. And it's getting fixed up there, those are the beams, so. You haven't been down by it in probably a few years. You're probably a little busy. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Dry out a little bit. Yeah, it's the first night I could be out planting corn in three weeks. Oh, it's been so wild. Public hearing before the ZDA of the Town of Southern will be held Thursday, May 13th, to consider the application of recent Derringer SPL 48.8 2 7 for property located at 6712 Ramsgate Road for an area variance for side yard setback to build a garage. The garage will be four feet from property line. Zoning requirement is eight feet. The above application is open for inspection. Okay, is there anybody here to present this? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you got um. Yeah. This is where she's planning on putting the garage. As you can see. How many feet does she have on the other side of her? Do we have a very narrow over here? Mm -hmm. And she's got eight feet here. garage would come approximately two foot away from that driveway and there's plenty of room between the house even if you, if you give her a zero lot line there'd still be like 15 feet in that house right but she would only have four feet but it... right four feet to her to the property line but there's this house sits like 12 feet off the property line so they're still close to 20 feet? Well, there'd be 12 plus 4. 
Well, you don't have a socket there. there. No. So you don't know where her tank is or anything. Because if she ever had to get back in her backyard to work at it, she basically can't. Well, they could get a mini excavator to repair. <clears throat> How big was the garage she was looking to do, Larry? See, this doesn't really. The garage is coming out to here. You can see there's still in the yep. fire room there. Okay. There's a 20, there's a 20. Has anybody found the size of the garage yet? Mike, what's the requirements on the two sides for this? 24, 24 uh, foot garage. <coughs> it's a 20 foot split 12 and 8. 12 and 8. Assuming it's an MR12. And it's 24 foot. It's saying proposed um, garage to property line and then proposed 24 foot garage. 4 foot of relief required. It is MR12. So it's 20 feet and 8 feet. So if they have, or 20 feet split 12 and 8. So if they have 12 on the other side. They, they have, have 8 on the other side. They have 8 on the side they're not building on. The side they're not building on, they have 8? Yes. So they would be getting relief from a 12 foot I'm sorry. I thought we just, they're 22 feet on the other no, they side. they have 28 feet on, they have plenty okay. of space on the other side. Oh, okay. I'm so the real right. question is how close is the property next to them? Because my, my understanding was no the twenty the, the next to their line so they got twenty eight feet on this side this yeah. is their house they've got nineteen feet here right now the question that we need to consider is the distance from this lot line to the neighbor here because that's why they have the twenty eight twelve rule yeah. so that right. you can get vehicles between each home this is this is easier to see yeah I think we, okay you're right okay so okay, um, this picture right here Mike Matt does a better yeah. job. Yeah. I mean, Which map are you looking at? Uh, it says lot 12 to survey. Thank you. And they're putting their garage on the 22 foot side. Uh, no. The no, on the 28 foot side. Okay, yeah, okay, I got it. No, and they want to do a 24 foot garage based on what I can see. Uh -huh. Which is, you right. know, that's so basically. They eight uh, and 12, they need four feet of well, length. There's 40 okay. feet between the two houses now. Okay. I think I was looking at yeah. the first ball. 24 foot. Looks like they're doing a 24 by 24 garage proposal. Yep. Yeah. And this picture here, guys, shows the distance between her house mm -hmm. and the house next door. What is that zone? I don't think it'd be in there. Wow. Yeah. Larry, you know what that's on there? It's a BMI MR12. MR12. What is it in? Just for us. But 
You said it was MR12. Yep. So with the MR12, it's the 12 and 8 then. Um, it would be 4 feet of relief on this side. Correct. The neighboring house is plenty far from the property line. Yeah, that's what the, I don't know what the distance is, but it's it's yeah, mm -hmm. so it's more than twelve. Okay. okay. Uh, is there anybody has any questions? All right, I will close this public hearing and we we'll go on to the third one. Are you going to check outside or? I, I just did. Okay. A public hearing before the ZBA of the town of Selvin will be held Thursday, May 13th, for that the town of Selvin office will consider the application of Patrick SBL 3.58-1-19 for property located at 655 Shackleton Point Road for an area variance to put a steel storage container next to an existing garage. The above application is open for inspection of the town of Southern Office Building. Persons wishing to appear at such a hearing may do so by person, attorney, or other representative. Are you Patrick? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Why don't you tell the board what you are proposing to do? Um, relocate uh, storage unit next to my uh, single car garage. We've never had this before, have we? And what is the town's rules on these? Oh. Okay, I was wondering if storage. it's even our description. So is this a use variance then? Larry, is this a use variance that he's asking for? Uh, no, there's nothing on our town code about containers. What's the variance request? Is he, What's the request is he the just to put the container and oh, to put it too it's close? A, it's a trailer. That's what it is. The container is the trailer. A trailer with wheels or just one of those containers set on the ground? ground. Solid steel. Shipping container. A shipping, shipping container. Yeah. And it's no closer to any property lines. We're not looking at a variance for that. What no, are it's we on the other side of my house. If it's not looking for lot line setback variances, then it's a and it's a use variance. Got to be one or the other, or you wouldn't be here. I kind of know about it. <laughs> We're just trying to pass the buck to somebody else. Um, again, this is something new to us. Well, the, the application doesn't indicate what the variance request is for. Correct. So somebody sent it to us. Larry, did you send yeah, this it? thing here from somebody? <laughs> Did you already acquire the container? Yes, I own it. Is I it already on your, it? Is it already on your property? No. Did you try I to didn't know I could put it there? Did you try to seek permission to get it on your property? So I am here. And so I'll, and somebody told you to come here. Was it Larry? I so, called somebody, yeah. Probably on the phone and uh, okay, so yeah, I come down. Well, once, once Larry gets the location found, you get it. So are we looking for a this thing mean anything? Oh, it's a building. That's no, considered okay. a building. Uh, it's an insulated plastic line storage shed, basically. Right, right. Uh, 
it, it's a medical, it's a metal right. container that can be put on the back of a truck and driven away. Exactly. It has to be shipped or dropped. By, uh, it's not, like one of the storage sheds. Like, it's like a storage shed. I'm not know. asking any questions of, of our board unless somebody else asks the questions. I think I think I know what we're doing here, but um, I'm not asking that question. To me, it sounds like a cargo container, like they would use for shipping. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, like a Connex type of steel container that. Yeah, my dad, I, my parents had just died. So is this? Any different than I go down to 84 Lumber and buy a steel building and put that up and, you know, if I'm not within any setbacks, I can do it, except that has a peak roof and this doesn't. So what is the difference? Other than the looks and aesthetics. You need to make sure that John Lane knows to talk to the board about it. Well, a pole barn all here. The steel structure is actually fixed to the ground. Yeah, this is you a can storage look, but don't cut. You can it just pick up and drive away. <laughs> that's yeah. why so I don't know if it qualifies. That's why he's here. There are three things that we do: area variances, use variances, and there's a third thing that we do. Right. But the question is: is what is that's the right. application for? Okay. Well, he's not asking any area variance, any footbacks, setbacks. And if he's using it to store his lawnmower or his tractors, you know, garden tractor, I don't see it's any different than any steel building. Does it need a setback though? It's different than a building because it's not affixed to the ground in any the way. The steel buildings you buy at 84 Lumber that people put up, so you go down to the the end of Tuscarora Road and buy one of those sheds, they're not on the ground. They're not attached to the ground. Yeah, that was my other option that people had told me. And they said, well, I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure yeah. out, you know. Well, then, then here's the other question. Does the concerns of the neighborhood have a significant input into the Well, it's decision? not up to us. Now, well, we're dealing, so, Again, area variances, use variances. That's what we do. Neither is specified on the application. And then there's a third thing that we do. That's the what? Nope. I, we, we interpret if somebody doesn't like what Larry says about what a definition is, there then be an appeal. they can ask us, as an appeal, they can ask us if we agree with Larry's definition and application of a term to their circumstance. So for example, a few years ago there was a shed situation, the guy wanted a use variance. He didn't, but he could have asked, uh, this was on Route 31, he wanted to be able to put up a pre-made shed, and mm -hmm. this was before we had John it's, and company it's still there. us. Oh, I know, and, and we, we didn't, go through the process of use variances in a way that was really consistent with what we should have been doing. And we told the guy, you know, if you put wheels on it, then it's portable. You know, so we gave him the, and since he could do that, we said we'd, we'd give him a, a use variance. If we had denied the use variance, he could have come back and asked whether or not a pre-made shed on flattened stones is actually a building or if it's a permanent structure, or if it's not a permanent structure. I think the language we have is permanent structure, isn't it? The language for a building. Is any roof structure permanently affixed to the land intended for the shelter, housing, and enclosure of persons, animals, or property? So obviously an accessory building, which I'm not saying this is what this is, but an accessory building is a building detached from, subordinate to, and whose use is incidental to, but consistent with that of the principal building on the same lot. So the question is, is this is a metal 
shipping, shipping container, container, a building. building. And it's not roofed. Yeah, it's got a roof. It doesn't leak. It's a flat roof. There are plenty of flat roof buildings in the town. Well, it's not a fixed roof. Right? It's also not a structure, and it's also not so affixed to the land. Yeah. But, so, he, but an accessory building, it didn't say an accessory building had to be uh, to the, uh, attached well, to the ground. That's, I mean, because right. it has the word, that's why you define the word building, though, so that any time it's then used in the code, you're referring back to that definition. So all these accessory buildings that when you buy a shed and they dump it off on your property, we should not be allowing them. Larry should be telling them to get them off if they're not permanently attached. I'm not trying, I'm just trying to work through Yeah, this. you're playing doubles as say, say your question again. All these sheds that you can buy, they come on a pickup truck, they dump them on your lawn, and they pull away. You never put any poles, they're not attached to the ground at all. So that was, should not be allowed in the town of Sullivan, according to our zoning laws. No, 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 they shouldn't be allowed, and we, we, for the last five years, haven't allowed them to be put on somebody's land as a standalone building. No, but this isn't a standalone, is it? This is not this property. Leaving him totally aside, if you're talking about the definition of building and building accessory, building accessory would include the, the drop-off things, but they're a secondary structure to the primary structure. Right. Mm -hmm. well, we're, what I'm talking about is what the word building means and whether or not a shipping a storage container, container qualifies as a building at all. It clearly does not. It doesn't, which no, means we don't have much to talk about. What, what, what is the there, there's a house on the property, right? The accessory. So building. this shed is an, is an accessory building, not used as a primary. It's a building detached from subordinate to, and whose use is incidental. But the word building refers back to the previous definition, which is a and roof that structure not, permanently affixed to the land. Okay, then going back to my other question, then all these sheds that. If I have a house, you have a house, and you go down the end of Tuscola Road, buy a shed, they come here, they drop it off on your property, and pull away, that is illegal. That should not be there. Because it's not permanently attached to the ground. Doesn't mean you can't have it, it means it doesn't qualify under Arizona, is what it would mean. If you... It would mean that you could do it, because it hasn't been addressed. Because, but okay, um, right. that, that's a building, Steve. This is basically a shipping container which would not meet the definition of a building in my mind. I, I, that's why I'm saying John's got to John's got to get in touch with the, the first question is Tom's word what, quickly. What brought this application to the zoning board? Yeah, tonight? we still don't have a reason that it's here. Nothing's been designated. You got to check either an area or an easement. We have to have a topic to address. Without a topic to address, we're just having a philosophical conversation. Right. We might talk. So, Larry, do you know what? I was under the assumption that it was a trailer. It still doesn't answer the question why it's here. It's a user area variance. There's no variance request right now. Does it meet? Or an interpretation. So if, if he goes to Larry and says, hey, I want to get the shipping container put on my property. What do I need for it? And Larry says, you can't put a shipping container on your property without a building permit. And then Larry says, I'm not going to give you a building permit for it. My, my now, my other ahead. question is option B is exactly what he said because if, if I can't. I need a shed. <laughs> I need to empty my garage. So if you can, if you can put a and shed, I up. can't do the shipping. If the shipping container and a wooden Amish building dropped in my yard, like he was saying, the the I, Amish, I, I can't do either. Then the Amish building you can get dropped on your yard, and if it's going to violate the setbacks, you know if it's going to be closer to the property line than a building is allowed to be, then you would come in front of us to say I. I'm seeking relief to be able to put this closer to the property line than what the code allows. We could have that discussion. The problem is that you're not asking to put a, a structure on your property closer to the property line. You're asking about whether or not you're allowed to put a shipping container on your property. Well, even assuming that this is, even if this qualifies to get an area variance in the first instance, I don't. I mean, I don't even know if this complies with the setbacks. I mean, nothing's indicated on the survey as to what the setbacks are. Um, so, there's nothing on the application that indicates. You got two garages on your property? Correct. 
So this is not going to be any closer to the property line than his existing garages. Correct. It's right. It's in between. The, 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 right, the door right here will be right behind my trailer. So again, it's, it's his survey showing at 22 feet off the property. That's probably at, at 25 so foot you're supposed driveway. to have 30 feet. I don't know what the space is. I just don't want to do anything. Well, maybe that could be the variance. Seven foot, eight, eight foot would be. We don't have anything defining shipping container in our town code. Right. So yeah. is that for that it would be an accessory structure, not an accessory building. Under the building code, it would be an accessory structure. Accessory structures are allowed to be placed on residential properties as accessory structures. So we're we're under the zoning code. Correct. So the question is whether or not it's it, it's a building or structure under the zoning as defined, not the building code. Well, we've got structure in here. It's an accessory building, an accessory building. Well, it's, it's not our call. He has no right. problem with setbacks right now. He's next to the garage. Well, he does. He does. Well, he, he's next he's to the garage. He's not 30 feet off. 30 feet off. Okay. So and he's 22, 22 nine. Feet off. So if we put it back eight feet, Right. Right. But doesn't it, but it's got to, the thing's got to be defined before it can come across right. and ask for an area variance. So you, Larry you just said he's considering the structure. Part there. And if you can put an Amish building on it, what's the difference? It's There's a difference between a building and a shipping container, in my mind, a significant difference. It's not a farm. An Amish <laughs> shed and a shipping container. Yes. I mean, they do the same thing structurally. I, I mean, you just know, about the definition. Better. What does it matter what it's made <laughs> out of? We're, We're just talking aesthetics. Of aesthetics of We're talking aesthetics in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, no, I agree. I, I agree. would not want this, but I'm just saying this is not addressing our coast. So I'm pretty sure you can even buy flat roof metal buildings at 84 lumber or loans and put them on your property. You know, you can go down there and buy an eight by 10 metal building with a flat roof and put it on your property. And if you're not within your setbacks, you do not get a, you do not need any variances. Now this is a whole lot bigger and a whole lot uglier. Larry, but does our code for, for structures, does it have a roof pitch rule? Nothing? I thought they put something in to avoid having single wipes go up all over the place. There was that, that's on the houses. That's on modular homes. structures. Yeah. Now you said something about it has to be permanently affixed to the land. That's for building, not for structure. That's a structure okay. structure says any permanent man-made building but assembly building. installation. It still includes that though. It's insulated because it says building. Correct. So for yes. twenty-three feet off the road, what's got to be fixed to land? land I tell you that. And being inside no, it. it. I, I do whatever I do. I just yeah. don't know what to do. I'm going to build this paper off the road like you could. And then when he wanted to move it, this is new to me too. I, but it had to be permanently fixed. If it's back seven feet, then you don't need a variance. You don't need a variance, and we don't know what to define the thing. So again, there's no reason for it to be there. I just don't want it. I'm not. I'm not saying right. Anything right. Anything right. Anything you're right. trying to do the right thing, and and this is something that hasn't been addressed to come before us. And I'll do. We're trying to figure out if you know. But the, the only reason he's, like, we, we don't define whether it's a building or a structure. That's not our goal. If he well, says he's got no problem with it going backwards seven feet, so he's 30 feet from the road, and he's 15 feet in from the side. From the side I'll get it. It's, we, we, yeah, we don't Go have buy it and put it in, and you'll be the only one on the lake that has one. You Because like, the, the board will probably work very quickly to limit or regulate shipping containers going out toward the lake. Or anywhere. In blunt language, if you're 30 feet from the road, I mean, you have no business in the room. I yeah, just didn't want what's, what's the size? I'd rather separate. come here and know what I need to do. Right. The garage is 14 4. He's dumb. <laughs> He's next to the garage. No, the, the garage thing is, is you right. will have a lot of angry neighbors. The garage is 22 feet you back. You know, you will. Well, from I already side. talked to my neighbors. They all got yeah, letters. The and and, and, and we were at a the other side. Yeah, it's 12. It's 12 inches. They said they didn't like it? Correct. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, nobody's happy about it. 
No. no. Oh, okay. That, that's what I was alluding to earlier. So, with that said, I don't want to piss off no haters. Um, you, have the, you have this packet of complaints that says that we shouldn't let it happen. <laughs> we don't want a shipping container in Except that you move it back seven feet, we have no sale. Well, there's only four. I'm not going to question if Larry has a terminal. <laughs> Thank you. That that is the right that is the right attitude. I don't rock no boat. All right. I inherited it. It's on the farm. I can leave it there. I just said, hey, why spend two grand on on a shed? If I I'm got a six thousand dollars in a big box, I can put my toys in. You know, I got a forty-eight inch or forty-two inch snowblower now, and all kind. I'm like, I can't move in my garage anymore. Well, if you don't want to make your if you don't want to make your neighbors angry, don't put it in there. Okay, so that was, <laughs> that was my other question is, whoever, if people are upset about it, I ain't doing it. So this so is we're, we're good, good to go with that, I guess. And, uh, I, I, I guess the the lady, we have no opinion if you don't do anything. <laughs> and the shed, if you, if you, well, I got to get something. So yeah, I'm probably coming back for a two car garage. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 12 feet from the sideline, 30 feet from the We're going in the front. Of, okay, since we're here. Why not? That's Just one hand. Well, you zoomed. I'm not too good. I got a flip phone. There you go. Okay. I run these old school. <laughs> I, I'm a flip phone guy. Okay, so Mama wants a garage because I got my own. So uh, she wants a garage up here. And uh, I. Do I got problems? 20 feet from the road. 20 feet or 30, 30. 30 feet from the road. My question. And you don't have to talk to us. 12 feet from the side, and you don't have to talk to us. If you get closer than that, so 30 and feet rear, back. back and the rear. Yeah. So my thought is, see, my my driveway goes all. He's not touching it. It goes all the way up like this. So my thought was behind this big tree. So you'll probably end up having to come and see us because you're we're near the lake. Septic field. Septic. We're not septic. Oh, you're you're we're hooked up in the sewer. Oh, you are in the sewer. Okay. Yeah, we're. It comes out here and goes this way. So they put all that in a few years ago. He's got plenty of room on the side. So. so yeah, this is plan B, um, and try to get a shed back there, but I don't want to piss off anybody. And, uh, so the container <laughs> deal staying on the farm. Yeah. So, so now I got to go and do more paperwork and Maybe probably yes. talk to you again. And go through. The square footage might be a problem at that point, depending on how many buildings you got and how big and how big the lot is. Yeah, you're not allowed to cover more than 25% of your property. You already have two buildings, buildings on it, plus the house. You put a third one on there, you're going to have to do some higher math, I think. Especially around the lake, it's pretty sensitive in terms of uh, last time that I was there now. I don't even know what to do with it. Anyways, well, there's always plan C. Mm -hmm. Trade. So, so the application that you, is with with, with your bronze. bronze. Yeah, I wouldn't have time. Now you're good. No problem. So, no, uh, but, okay. Well, well, listen, we appreciate you coming here and trying to do the right thing yes. rather than just doing yeah. it or plopping it in the middle of your yard yeah. and then all of a sudden we've got a, a lot of unhappy people and yeah. name no. calling in neighborhoods. And, and no, I don't want to piss any of it. And neighbors. that's a nice neighborhood. I've got friends over there. Yep. <laughs> I've never had any complaints with anybody's no. neighbor. I've never tried to do anything, but <laughs> I've just been I had to take care of my wife for 15 years, but she passed, my dad passed, and mom passed. So it's been a, a four year uh, and my two dogs. Wow. So now uh, I figured, well, I've thrown everything in the garages for three years. Jeez. So I got no room. So I uh, I guess I'm done. Thank okay. you, and I guess I'm gonna call you and fill out more paperwork and okay. try and get. So you want to sell that shipping container? <laughs> Anybody wants to buy it? How big of a one is it? It's a sporty footer. It's uh, uh, eight, uh, there you go, Steve. eight by uh, forty by. Uh, Whereabouts it located? Uh, you know where Mafali Villa is? Mm. Sister in. Uh, you know where uh, Bear Road is and Allen Road? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, behind there is a hundred acre muck farm. My Buddhist, you know, uh, the regional market? Yep. My dad's best friend is the Buddhist. Yep. Like, and uh, he let him store it down there. Yep. And uh, so that's where I put it. And I'm like, wow, I never thought I could bring it here. And now I know it's here. Yeah. <laughs> it's the wise thing. Yeah. Okay. So, but I guess I'm going to go for the. See if the garage works. If not, I'm always stuck with an almond shed. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you thank for you. being reasonable. Thank you. Yeah. For a good night, Jeff. Thank you. Have a good night. That was my first experience. Hopefully, we didn't sell her in life. <laughs> it took it well. Yeah. 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 Nothing happened. So, so they. Yeah, thank you. Good or bad, I was just gonna say right away. Uh huh. Huh? They need the, the board Don't needs to be down. aware. Yeah. Just to make sure you exempt funds. I already got two of them. Farms <laughs> <laughs> are always exempt from everything. I didn't want to say all yeah, farms you got free reign. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're gonna have three. <laughs> yeah, I was under the assumption that. It was Okay, let's move on. So the first here in Hunters, uh, set back to the paper street. Who has the paperwork? I have that one. Uh, what are the end So just for Martha's information, we have a little worksheet where we go down through five questions, weighing the pros and the cons, and it sort of helps us decide, you know, sure. what decision. And then we also have, you know, a leg to stand on and. If someone comes back and challenges our reasoning. So the first one here, whether the undesirable change would be produced in the character of neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. I think no. Um, the house is going to be close to the same square footage. Um, any thoughts on that? I'm in alignment with that comment and statement. Uh, number two, whether benefits sought by applicant can be achieved by a feasible alternative to the variance. I'd say yes. Um, not necessarily. I would say yes, but it's probably cost prohibitive because it would involve moving the septic system that's, all, that's already there. I mean, it could be done, but it would be expensive. Right, they could build a smaller house. Or Right. I mean, there's, yes, but I don't know if there's a, a feasible way or alternative. Not with the septic system already there. I don't know how you can say that they could do it differently. They could put it right where it, it is. Put it right turn back it where, 90 degrees from where They could put it right back where it is and build a house there and, and be, don't, don't not need anything. You know, don't, they, mean, don't they run into the, the setback from the road? No, you're saying an existing house. It was existing. Footprint. They could do on the, the same footprint. footprint. They could do the same footprint. But okay. I mean, I think what they're doing is going to be nice to have it across. I mean, it's going to be back away from the road, back away from the corner. I think it, it it's much better. To have but, it. You can, but, you can, but you can say yes that they could do it differently if they put so, it where I guess. Yeah, I mean, not feasible. Um, Getting back to the one we were. How much room did they have on the, can you blow it up so they got, they they got 50 the, feet to the west. Can we blow up so I can see the street more how all the other houses line up on the street? Shrink it down. please. Okay. Oh. Too much. <laughs> so the, that one is almost as close as any as it is now. You gave her, last year you gave her permit for a barn at zero. Right here. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, and then also it would move the house away from the corner. So I don't know. Um, whether the requested variance is substantial? Um, probably yes. I don't think it's. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I would say yes, but it's not a deal breaker. Yeah, I'd say yes, but given that it's to a paper road, it's not a determining factor. Right. Mm -hmm. There's bigger questions overall with the whole paper road syndrome. 
And what's the setback to the other house? You said 20 feet. To which house? Oh, yeah, it'll, be, it'll be 20 feet between the yeah, paper so. street. Yep. So I don't know how far that is from the paper street. So the paper street is 18 feet. Yeah, and I thought I just heard you say the setback from a side yard is only 12. So this would And then be... the MR12, it has to be a total of 12, 20 feet. No, 12 on one side. She doesn't, she doesn't have a side setback there. Because you're on a corner, you have two front setbacks. I have two front setbacks here and here, but this is a side setback, correct? That would be a rear setback. So that technically should be 30 feet, right? So this is my only side over here? Yes. Well, so this is... Yeah. I don't know if we've ever clearly defined whether that's a side or also a rear. Well, that's the problem with the corner. You gotta give it a side. You gotta give it a rear. Because it's front. Um, it's where the, the front of the house is. Like we're trying to work with it. So the front is, front is to the road. So you're on a corner. Right. Right. So I have two fronts. Right. You have two fronts. Because you have two rows. So then does she have two rears or two sides? I know, right? That's my question. <laughs> I know that we've I know we've gone through this and said that it's two fronts. I don't know if we've ever been in a situation where we had to talk about whether it's sides or rears. I had three front yards at my old house. <laughs> did you have a backyard or did you have a I side yard? Code officer would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming this was a, a side here, because the streets here, this would become a rear. So technically that should be 30 feet off of rear setback, right? Which is, what is it, the 12? The 12 feet. Do you, know, do you know how far, how far the septic tank is from the property line? We just guessed that it was at the wording. It, it is at the wording. There's like a little uh, up thing right there mm -hmm. that we just saw. Because Where's it was it? very close, you probably see it right there. It was very close when you came out of this little porch thing. It was like right there. I, I would be guessing. Well, hopefully one of these days we're going to get the sewers down there. I know. It's true. <laughs> of course, because we just want to replace the septic tank. Sure. We spent a lot of money for it. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, question number four. Would the variance have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental condition of the neighborhood? I don't think so. No. So no. no. Um, other properties are built all through there. Um, Oh, Aaron, you're driving that thing. I'm wondering who the <laughs> Yeah. I can't move it, though. That's what I'm saying. Um, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. This one I need a little help with, a little discussion on. Um, let's say, I mean, the house, the house fell down. You were going to redo the house, so that's not your fault. The um, insurance do not agree with us either, but you know, we got nothing for that either. So we are like up against the wall right now trying to figure stuff out. We didn't plan on it falling down. But now squeezing it in where it is, is the rock and the hard place between the prop, the paper street, which is not of their doing, but the septic tank that is of your doing. I understand you yeah. put it on the same footprint where it was. And they have yeah. to be 10 feet from the tank. But I, I don't know, I, oh, I, cool. I think that the improvement on the property is going to be a positive thing. That's a good I'm not, thing. I'm not, I'm not no, arguing no, right that. No, I'm, no, just answer, I'm just answering number five. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> no, I'm not arguing with you, I'm just... Um, I'm, I'm all for it, I wish I knew where the septic tank was so we could, so we could just do some simple math to figure out where the septic tank is. You know, if you got, how, what's, the, how, what's the size of the house, I'm sorry. That you're looking 20 at? Yeah, we're looking at? Yeah. We want to do, I think, 30 wide because we're looking at a modular. They usually 30 is the widest if we orient it the opposite way. Yeah. Um, and that's why we need the, the depth by... back to the paper street. I think you said 48 was the latest proposal okay. that I've drawn up. Yeah. So, like, if we had 50 feet there, you got to be 10 feet back, and we could do 10 feet off the line, and then there. I just wish I knew where we wish we knew where that septic tank is. Was. The board just so it's just so everyone remembers, the board only has to grant the minimum variance necessary to for the applicant. So you no, don't have to grant exactly what's requested, you can grant something different. Terry, just throwing this out. Mm -hmm. it, it, if if we gave you two feet off the paper road, would that give you enough wiggle room to be able to 
Absolutely. No. That includes overhangs. Oh yes, it's not, yeah, not the know wall. That. It's the overhangs. Now, Larry, does that work from your perspective? Because the old house is actually too close to Front Street right now. If you well, I consider this down here to be Front Street. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. Old maps. Yeah. It's only 22 off the front. We want to get it to 30 to come back into. So the you're road. actually going to help us by. I want to get it off the road and make it a nice corner. Sure. And since this is just dead space, moving back there, it back will we'll improve the neighborhood. I'm giving her a variance of two feet off the back line, off the paper road on the back, keeps her happy and allows a substantial improvement to the neighborhood. So it, it, it doesn't address your long-term concerns about all the paper streets, but you know, what do we want yeah, to do with self-created money on that? Do we want to say yes or no? I mean, it seems like it's out there, but no, it's, it's not being worked on. I guess to it's, it's, out. it's something that nobody wants to address. Basically. Well, I'm sure if there's title issues, I mean, I don't know. It sounds like we couldn't find an attorney to work with you. It sounds like there may be title issues with these paper roads that are hard to figure out. They're not needed. They're not titled. There's no paperwork out Right. I'm saying so it doesn't have a clear title to the right. transaction itself. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to be able to build on them. You know, the thing is somebody yeah. could put them up and, and you know, and say you can't come on that property. Yeah. So if she was right up to it, but she couldn't paint the back of her house. That's fine. I, I, I just think it, it on her experience team. is going yeah, to be it her should, her team should to maintain the house it and should. not be on somebody but else's property. Different. And I only bring this up because I'm dealing with this with my yeah, family. You get your own so on both sides, I've got lot of line variances. Mm -hmm. So it's just, and it's not just today, but it's down the road. Sure. You know, I, how does I, this affect your property? I think the challenge is that, so she knows who the owner of the property is, but if every property there is given a right of way to that strip, then it's not as simple as going and buying that yeah. from the property right. owner and getting the meets and bounds for the road right. and adding that to the deed of the tax parcel. Now you have to find out how to give compensation to everybody yes, exactly. who's giving up the right of way. Yeah. Or you have to find all of the right of ways yeah. and write all of them into the new deed that she buys from the current owner. You just said it. That, that's why nobody <laughs> wants to touch it. Yeah. Because having to contact that many people and put that much together, it's not worth the value exactly. of the property. See, yeah, it makes sense. It would always be there. We'll always deal with it. We'll always have the 18 feet. But there's nothing to make it. We will probably make it. <laughs> Corner lots. Um, well, the benefit of the applicant um, does outweigh the detriment to the neighborhood or community, and therefore uh, I'll make a motion two feet off the paper road. And, um, I'll second. What did you put procedure that it should be a type two for this one? Yeah, so we got type two, a negative declaration. Right. So that application for is it Jim the last dot active? I'll put it back in the Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Did I hear Brian or not? Yeah. You said aye. aye. And I will also say aye. Two feet off the back line. Thank you. If somebody ever ends up with that property and doesn't allow you to go on it, you're not going to be able to put a ladder on the back of your house to maintain it. Well, I got it's going to be a pretty some, steep, steep vertical ledge over your property line. I don't know if it's before. I inherited the property. The property. Yeah, yeah. And I think probably because they knew the neighbors, they allowed them to do that. But I'm not sure. Are those property lines really accurate? No. no. I don't think they are because I think it's actually, that's why when I look at this, I'm not sure if what you're seeing is really accurate in terms of property lines. No. So, because I know it's like a foot off our lot line. It looks like on here, though, it's way over. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. not. Right. Yeah. 
not were the those survey. They're not the survey line. encroachments they're to your property? Have they been there? Were they done before zoning been in our or the, the encroachments on your property? The variances were they done years ago before zoning yeah. or were they just zoning done? Zoning <laughs> zoning both were allowed to have variances. Okay. So you know, I just think it does start to change the neighborhood character when you allow a lot of variances in a concentrated area. So that's, it, it, it can. Um, um, yeah, and, you know. and it's tough down there on those narrow lots. You can't do anything, you know. Really. And and we did allow uh, her garage to be built right on the line. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, what, a year ago? Less than a year ago. Um, well, okay, moving on the to the vehicle. second hearing, the one on Ramsgate Road. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. I think I have one. Uh, type two. Are you letting us out? No. Uh, whether an undesirable change will be produced in care to the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. I put no. No. All because there's multiple homes in the neighborhood that have garages and still have access to the backyard through the other side. And the neighbors got access to their backyard to the corner lot. Um, whether the benefit sought by the applicant be achieved by a feasible alternative. I said no because there's limited building space available to the applicant. Whether the requested variance is substantial, I want to say yes because even though it's only four foot, you can look at it four foot and say that's that's <laughs> not substantial, or you can say it's fifty percent yeah. of the variance. So I want to say yes because it is fifty. But it's not a determining factor, anyways, because it's it's reasonable. Correct. Yeah. But I do want to say yes that it is substantial because mm -hmm. it is fifty percent of the allotment. discussion before a two-car garage you really need how many feet for a two-car garage more well, eight and eight 16 well i think there's a I, think 12 and 12. Park <laughs> I was going to say you can do it with 20 but it's really uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, small, I, small car small cars yeah. yeah i mean 24 by 24 is pretty Stay good, good mm -hmm. comfortable 24 point. you're pushing it on if you're pulling a truck in there too yeah mm -hmm. They can never be good enough. Uh, <laughs> would the variance have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood? I don't think so. Can you no. blow it up again? Just let's see what the neighborhood looks like a little bit. I think there's a lot of them that are close to the. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you know. They need to get a pool. Yeah, I'm surprised that they. <laughs> These lots, small lots. These lot, this lot in particular, comes like this off the street, and then does this. So he's got actually got to put a retaining wall on the back side mm -hmm. of the building for the garage. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, it's steep behind it. Wow. Very steep because it's a walkout basement on the house. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. That's the house was put where the lot lines are. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, except he, he doesn't have that garage. For one that big. Is that you? <laughs> so, so it would be so created. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and again, like, that's okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, the, like the third question. I, I think, in the essence of it, the answer is yes, because it is self created, but it's not. It's not a thing. Right. Yeah. So, just one change on the resolution it should be an unlisted action for purposes of secure. For seeker, should be unlisted, not take two. All right. Sorry. And uh, under on part two of the EAF um, would be no or small impact. Does the board have any changes to that? No. Say that again. No or small impact on all the questions on part two of the short EAF for purposes of seeker. Any changes? No. Why are you doing the bigger seeker? Because it's not it's it's not an unlisted or it's not a type two action. It's unlisted. So. Why garage? Yeah. It's a, it's the 
Type two is an area variance for a single family home, which the last one was, this one's a garage. It's a little, just a little different. I would agree with that. Yeah, no, you don't know. No, you are. I, I think I found something that would prevent the storage containers, arguably, of course. Can I finish this first? I guess. I, I understood the individual words that you just said, but the man who put them all together, he lost me like four words in. <laughs> you guys usually don't have, to do, you don't have to do a lot of seeker usually, so you know. So garages have different rules. It's yeah, they're not it's not specifically on the type two list, so there's uh, been a lot of garages. I'm gonna say the benefit to the applicant does outweigh the measurement of the neighborhood. to grant the four foot variance in CAG. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of said variance signify by saying aye. 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 So on this on the last one, the, the Shackleton point, just make sure the minutes reflect that the applicant withdrew his application. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I didn't vote for the proposition um, on Coulter Cove Road, and neither did Steve. Um, did I read it right? I skimmed it earlier. Not have the vote of the actual. We got the approval of the minutes. Motion was made by Manny, second by Cavill. All in favor, it said something right. It does say unanimously passed by the board. Yes. Not it was three, against it. It was three to two. Mm -hmm. It's a rare three to two vote. Well, what's rare is Cliff, the champion of do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> voted against one of his neighbors. No parking. It's, very, it's, it's, it's parking. common sense. You gotta have common sense. So they can support parking. Just out of the, I mean, shocking. I just can't do it. It's not gonna be a good situation. So, so what do we do? Those have to be revised then? Yeah. Okay, so, so I'll table the, no, we're gonna correct that. We're gonna pass the minutes as correct. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to pass as corrected with a 3 2 vote. I'll second it. All in favor, signify by aye, say aye. 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 Very quickly, don't want to waste everybody's time, but in uh, attachment number three, part three, it says external storage of industrial and commercial equipment and vehicles is prohibited. You could argue. That a container is industrial equipment. But you get all section three. Also argue book. that household attachment. household items are stored in it. What's that? And you can also I mean, that, argue that household items are stored in it, not industrial. It but doesn't matter that the the container itself is an industrial piece. Where's this? Right here. Where's that this? is by three. That's it's, that's it's Mike's interpretation. It is our And my interpretation is it's not a building. That's, sure it's that's according to your interpretation. What, what I'm communicating is that have to be a building. if you if you don't want to run into a problem with the board having to pass a law that specifically prohibits it, mm -hmm. Larry, as a codes officer, has the mm. authority to interpret that board. section as to prohibit right. storage right. containers. But then they can change and come before us. And, and then if they don't like his, interpret his, his decision, so then they can apply for an interpretation and appeal to us. And then 
Yeah. You guys can make whatever decision you want. Okay. That's a. That's a. That's will be great. Not you know, it's not the well, what what you don't want is for the lake to start looking like a freaking LA port. Yeah. No ice storage container. It's by the lake. And, more appropriate. And, and as as timber becomes more and more expensive, and it becomes more and more unreasonable to build a decent shed, you're going to see people do that. I already know some people that, that have taken um, tra uh, tractor trailers and just, they got like five, tra now they got a huge lot, they got plenty of space, but they got like four tractor trailers on their property that they use for storage. My neighbor, my neighbor, gallon. Two. As long as nobody can see it. So if somebody Not that wants to deal, put, but when you're on the lake. Somebody wants to put five of them together and build a house out of them. That's the other place well, where I you can stack them and make a pretty you nice house. You know, those short ones like they do. Yeah. You could really make a nice house. They do. They exist that way. Yeah. What do you so get that's the something that the board's got to get on. Although does and New York State Building month? Code yeah. make that a challenge? You can do that. Why you can. Why couldn't they, um, they be building with you? Just, you just have to get an engineer to design it. That's all. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Any, what's out in the future? Anything in the future? We only have like three or four more of these meetings, and then we won't meet for about four or five years. Cost? Nobody's going to have any money or materials to build anything. We're sliding backwards. <laughs> Buying it. Buying it. Well, we have uh, coming up next one, we have well, in New York. Uh, a couple that built a carport and a deck on their house, no permits. I cited them for no permits, but I couldn't tell. I told them they had to get a survey because you can't clearly see where they're. But wide, they're wide open area, Clark Road. Yep. And come to find out, he needs his variances both for the carport and the deck. So he's coming in for that. Okay. Okay. And then June 1. <laughs> How long ago did he build them? Last year. June 10th. They're COVID, COVID uh, construction. Here's my big question. What's the statute of limitations on getting away with it? Never. Is there a statute of limitations? If I, if I find it, I'll, I'm going to cite you. You're saying if it's 10 years. What I'm saying is if I, let's say I put an addition on my garage. And I don't have a garage, so I couldn't. It's hypothetical. 